Eric Estevez is a bright young man who is currently teaching at Northeastern University. He is a candidate for a double major, and when I say double major, I don't, certainly don't mean in the uh, undergraduate uh, program. He's already achieved uh, a political science uh, baccalaureate degree, a BS, a BA, from Barry University, which is in Florida, I believe. He also has a master's degree in global studies, and at the present time, he is in the process of completing his PhD slash JD, Juris Doctor Law Degree at Northeastern. He is a member of the Wakefield Republican Committee. He is a member of the Wakefield Board of Registrars. Uh, and he's also served in the Municipal Budget Committee. Um, people like Eric is what I think the Republican Party needs in the future. Really, any party needs in the future. And I'd like to welcome him on, be on behalf of the Mola Republican City Committee. I'm sure you'll find his remarks uh, very interesting this morning. Please welcome Eric Estevez. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Peter, for that warm introduction. I appreciate it. It's good to see that the Republican Party is not extinct in Massachusetts, uh, so we have some good people here. I uh, would like to uh, acknowledge some uh, good people who are here today, the uh, next city councilor at large of Malden, uh, David D'Arcangelo. And we have our Senator Richard to say it's good to be here in his district. I cannot think of any district in the Massachusetts State Senate that is uh, better represented. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Richard to say for his leadership. Charlie Baker, thank you for coming. <laughs> Governor Patrick, better be careful. <laughs> and I would like to also thank my good friend from my hometown of Wayfield, Al Turco. <laughs> Al is the chairman of the Wakefield Republican Town Committee, and he's also a member of the Board of Selectmen in Wakefield. He is currently running for re-election for uh, his seat on the Board of Selectmen in Wakefield, and I, I ask you all to offer your help and assistance to Al. Because I think what is unmistakably clear is that whether we are from Wakefield or Malden, or whether we are from any other city or town within the Commonwealth, we're all on the same team. And we need to stick together in order to prevent this uh, Commonwealth from uh, further destruction. This past election has taught us that the Republican Party base is shrinking demographically, philosophically, and culturally. In 2008, Democrats gained eight U.S. Senate seats bringing the balance of power in favor of the Democrats, 59 to 41. In the United States House of Representatives, the Democrats gained 21 seats, bringing the balance of power 257 to 178. In the presidential election, traditional red states became blue and allowed the Democrats, Democrats to capture the uh, White House in a commanding victory. Here in uh, Massachusetts, our state house is overwhelmingly Democratic, and our uh, entire congressional delegation in Massachusetts is Democratic. With the defeat of Christopher Shays in Connecticut last November, there is not a single New, New England Republican in the United States House of Representatives. If history is a guide for the future, then there is no better history lesson for Republicans to study than the 1964 campaign. For Republicans, the 1964 campaign was about two things. Firstly, rebuilding the Republican Party, and secondly, the importance of optimism in the face of adversity. And today, we stand in need of both. The 1964 campaign was a very interesting campaign, but the year 1964 also had a significance in history. It had been less than a year that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas on November 22, 1963 and Lyndon Johnson was sworn in aboard, aboard Air Force One as the 36th President of the United States. The Gulf of Tonkin incident in August of 64 furthered America's involvement in Vietnam, and at home, the economy and civil rights caused tension. In the election of 1964, Democrat Lyndon Johnson positioned himself as a moderate, contrasting himself against his Republican opponent, Barry Goldwater who the Johnson campaign characterized as a radical right-winger. Most famously, the Johnson campaign ran a commercial entitled The Daisy Girl ad, 
which featured a little girl picking petals from a daisy in a field. Counting the petals while the countdown to a nuclear expo explosion could be seen and heard in the distance. The Daisy Girl political ad was a response to Goldwater's av advocacy of using nuclear weapons to combat communism in the continent of Asia. Senator Barry Goldwater of Arizona was a good and decent man who loved his country, but his views was, were way before his time. America was just not ready to take a chance on a conservative, smaller government philosophy less than two decades after FDR's popular New Deal. According to the Miller Center of Public Affairs at the University of Virginia, Johnson soundly defeated Goldwater in the general election that year, winning 64.9 percent of the popular vote, the largest percentage differential since 1824, when Andrew Jackson of Tennessee defeated John Quincy Adams of Massachusetts. In terms of the electoral vote, Johnson won 486 electoral votes in 64, while Gold Goldwater won only 52. So as you can see, it was an obvious landslide. The most important thing about Goldwater is not that he lost the presidency in 1964 by a record margin, but rather he inspired a new generation of activists through his integrity and political courage. He laid the foundation of a Republican resurgence that lasted for over a 30-year period. He was the closest thing that America ever had to a Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Goldwater also paved the road for a future president in 1964 named Ronald Reagan. In Reagan's campaign speech for Goldwater, A Time for Choosing, he said, I spent most of my life as a Democrat. I recently have seen fit to follow another course. I believe that the issues confronting us cross party lines. So as far back as uh, Reagan uh, can uh, remember, is when he was uh, spokesman for GE, Reagan was wise enough to understand that the Democratic Party had changed. The Democratic Party was no longer the party of Truman and Kennedy and other moderate, moderate Democrats. It had been hijacked by an extremist left-wing agenda. And I wish the voters of Massachusetts would understand that. And after this election, I wish the voters in the rest of the country would understand that as well. Now, like uh, Lincoln, Reagan came from very humble beginnings. Therefore, people always questioned uh, whether he was sincere. They asked why didn't he support the uh, democratic agenda of helping the poor. But I think J.C. Watts uh, summed it up well. J.C. Watts was a former Republican congressman from Oklahoma. And he said that both political parties show compassion, but in different ways. The, the, the Democratic Party shows compassion by putting people on welfare, where the Republican Party shows compassion by getting people off welfare and giving them a job. So I think the uh, Republican compassion is in the better interest of the United States and in the better interest of individuals because it gets people on their own two feet. And in the process, uh, makes government a little smaller. And that's what we want as Republicans. That's, that's in our platform. Now, after Reagan's uh, national debut in 64, he uh, continued to fight for his principles and what he believed in. He was elected governor of California in 1966. And believe it or not, Reagan would seek the presidential uh, nomination on the Republican side three times before by finally being successful in 1980. So I think that demonstrates his, uh, his determination. Now, after Watergate, the wounds of Vietnam still fresh, American hostages held in Iran during the Carter administration, and record infla inflation during the Carter administration, a polarized America that had been unready for Goldwater conservatism back in 64 took a chance on Reagan in 1980. And I'd like to point out that Ronald Reagan won Massachusetts not once, but twice, in 1980 and 1984. And this can happen again. Republican candidates can win Massachusetts, Massachusetts, but we need to have confidence and we need to fight hard. Now, when Reagan was elected, America really did hit the jackpot. <laughs> With the help of Paul Volcker at the Federal Reserve, Ronald Reagan's tax cuts after they took effect in 1983 ignited a 17-year boom unlike any in the 20th century. America was back. Reagan had followed the lead of Presidents Warren Harding and Calvin Coolidge, who had cut Woodrow Wilson's wartime tax rates of nearly 70% to 25%, resulting in the Roaring Twenties. The Roaring Twenties meant the economy was good at the time. And that was a time of unrivaled prosperity. 